So I, we saw this post by Tom Henderson. I, I took it like, I was pretty surprised by it, but basically Insider Gaming has been able to verify with multiple GameStop employees that Black Ops 6 will release on past gen consoles, specifically the PS4 and Xbox One. And the plan also, as alluded to in the FTC hearings, the plan is to also bring Call of Duty to the Nintendo Switch, but the current Switch is not powerful enough. So they are going to wait for the Switch 2, and then they'll be bringing Call of Duty games to that platform as well. So you'll be able to play all of them on all the platforms. But they've they've said that they've been able to confirm it. According to developer sources, the franchise doesn't necessarily need to move away from past gen consoles since the move of Call of Duty HQ. As part of Microsoft and Activision deal, which will bring COD to Nintendo for 10 years, it's understood that Call of Duty will be released on Nintendo Switch platforms, including the Switch 2, or starting with the Switch 2, presumably next year as the original switch isn't powerful enough blah blah, blah. yeah so as as people are saying diamond hands so essentially black ops 6 is an xbox one game just upscaled on everything else basically basically and like i i tweeted out about it because i was like it's crazy that four years into the generation and we're still getting triple or triple a games releasing for last gen hardware that's over a decade old because at this point in 2024 if you're releasing on the ps4 and xbox one that is hardware from 2013 and like the xbox one was considered pretty weak for 2013. that was like the big talking point around the time was that the ps4 was well, a more capable gaming machine so like it's it's just wild but that's you know you're developing for the lowest common denominator you're limited in terms of scope and scale and what you can do um there's multiple defenses to it some people will be like well shooters are not that taxing and demanding like yeah you can crank a bunch of knobs and add cool visual effects and stuff or increase texture resolutions and things like that but at the end of the day calculating bullet fired bullet travels and hits the target with this hitbox blah 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 that's not that crazy intensive so it is scalable and i think it definitely is scalable and of course they put a lot of time and effort into optimizing but it still means scope is is limited like you could do some crazy arenas crazy like dynamic arenas and stuff uh with destructible environments and really cool stuff if they were not held back by hardware that was weak a decade ago you know it would it, it, you just you could crank it and i mean jez corden replied and was like why force people to upgrade the business is selling games and microtransactions which absolutely is the case and what i said was no one's saying there isn't a reason behind it clearly the user base on last gen is significant and they'll make more releasing everywhere but i still think it's fair for people to feel like games are being held back and could be better if made exclusively for modern hardware and this is the thing like from a business perspective makes total sense from a gamer's perspective if you bought the new hardware i think you're totally justified in feeling ticked off by this move because you're like i i paid in for the next gen and i feel like i'm not getting treated the way i thought i was when uh i was buying into a an ecosystem that was meant to evolve gaming and improve it you know but the numbers are pretty clear it's because as Tom Anderson reports, 48% of PlayStation players that play Call of Duty are on PS4. Half of all PlayStation Call of Duty players are on last gen hardware. So to make it next gen exclusive just gives up half of PlayStation's revenue. Like it, it, you might get some people who bite the bullet and are like, okay, I'm gonna sell a bunch of stuff and I'm gonna save up and I'm gonna get the PS5 so I can play Call of Duty um, upgraded and stuff. You might get some people, but a lot of people will be left behind. Because at this point in the generation, there's probably two reasons why somebody doesn't have a PS5 if they're playing on a PS4. And it's either because they just don't feel the need to because the games haven't really pushed them into that position or because they can't afford it. Because games are like they pay 500 bucks for a console and with tax and extra fees and maybe another controller, whatever, it might be 550, 600 bucks. And then they get that, whoop de doo now you gotta pay a $70 game just for one then you gotta go spend another probably 100 bucks for the deluxe because you want to play it early or something like all of a sudden all this money starts to get get fleshed out and i can understand why people don't have that money and it's like tough to uh be in the position as the devs and publisher to be like yeah well all those people that can't afford it yeah we'll screw them uh, we're gonna make it next gen exclusive 
Uh, so I get both sides of it. I understand the perspective, but again, I think it's fair for people that did pay in for the current gen. I think it's fair for them to also feel frustrated by it. You know, I think both sides are right to feel frustrated. If they made it next gen exclusive, all the 48% the of PlayStation players that are playing on a PS4, they would be right to feel frustrated by that because they can't afford a PS5. I think they'd be right to feel that way because it does suck. But on the other side, by keeping it last gen compatible, they're also limiting the scope and scale. And so for people that did buy into the next gen, they feel like their games are being held back by decade old hardware and they feel frustrated. So I think both sides are, are understandable, you know? I get it. But I think at the end of the day, eventually you're going to have to bite the bullet. By this logic, if we're just always going to be keeping games on the platforms where there's a lot of players, like that's exactly how Diablo Immortal happens. You all have phones, don't you? Do you know how many billions of phones there are in the world? If we make a game that can go on those platforms, we'll make tons of money. And so many people will be able to play it. They'll be so thankful. Yeah, and I guess you could counter and say, well, we did get Call of Duty Mobiles. <laughs> so I guess they did it. But that's a standalone game. Like if they were doing Call of Duty Black Ops 6 for the PlayStation 5, and then they had a different game made by a different studio that was built for the PS4 and Xbox One, and also could be played on the modern stuff, that would at least make more sense. Kind of like what Ubisoft did back in the day with uh, like AC Rogue and ac unity they launched like in the same year in 20 november of 2014 ac black flag released in october of 2013 but rogue was playable on uh ps3 360 so just like they released black flag in october and then they release where's unity so they they release black flag in october of 2013 in November of 2014, they released AC Rogue and in where's okay. In November, the same day, November 11th, the same exact day, they release AC Unity for next gen consoles. So you could play Rogue on PS4 and Xbox One, but you could also play it on PS3 and 360. And then Unity was only available on PS4 and Xbox One. And so they just double dipped. You know, so they gave it to everybody as an option. If you were on last gen, you had a game to play. If you were on next gen, you had this game to play and you had this game to play. And I think that might be a, a reasonable compromise, you know, but instead it looks like Black Ops 6 is just going to be fully cross-generational. They're going to keep it scalable because I think they'll announce that it's being ported to the Switch 2 and I get it more player numbers there's more people on those platforms i i understand why the decision was made but i still think it's frustrating for everybody you know that did buy into it have you seen that black ops 6 is going to have saddam hussein and 9 11 as part of the campaign uh it's going to be no russian for modern players yeah um i saw it was rumored i don't know if it's been confirmed if it has been confirmed um I, I just haven't seen that, but I did see it was, it was rumored. I, I think it's the old difficulty of like, if an event, a tragedy happened long enough ago, people will tolerate entertainment content being produced off of it. But if it's too soon after the tragedy, it's seen as distasteful, you know? And so it's a, a you're towing a line with it. For example, after the assassination of the American president, Abraham Lincoln, people are like, okay, let's have some reverence. Let's show some reverence for this, this great leader who was assassinated in, in cold blood. And let's just take a breather, everybody. But after enough time passes, it's seen as acceptable to create Abraham Lincoln, the vampire hunter. <laughs> and people just make this out of it, you know? Um, it's like, huh? Okay. Okay. Weird choice. Weird choice, but okay. Uh, so at, at a certain point, once enough time passes, people seem to move on and kind of forget about the fact that like the, this was an actual event, you know, 9-11 is still pretty recent. So yeah, I mean, I, I think it's, I, I will keep an open mind because I think there's ways that it could be done respectfully feels like a weird, a weird word to use for it. But like, 
where I I'm open to it is that there is a generation of people playing games right now, playing games like Call of Duty right now, that did not experience 9-11, that did not watch the towers fall on TV. Like I was at that time four years old and I remember being in the family room and I remember seeing on the TV those images of the towers burning. I remember seeing that and I remember my mom like very shaky and disturbed by it, of course, but like ushering us kids into the backyard so that we wouldn't see it. Like, I remember that very clearly. It's it's like a, a staple in American life is a lot of people that were alive during that time can tell you exactly where they were and what was going on when that happened. Um, but there's a lot of, there's a whole generation right now that never experienced that. And so to tell them that story and to help it live on in that way in the form of a video game could be a really interesting way of educating an entire generation on that that event, which I think could be a very good thing for everybody to remember the story and remember what happened and never forget it. Um, it could be done in a really distasteful way. It could be done in a very dis like disgusting way. But if it can carry the story on again and introduce it to a new generation i think that that's wonderful i think that that's what honestly people should be doing by telling the story but if we can tell the story through a more interactive medium then wonderful but if it's something like really toxic and like disgusting and it's something where like they have you fly planes and so, like you know where it could go um that would be an instance where I would be very upset, but I don't think they're going to do that. I, I think it's, I think they're going to probably have it as a topic in the game, but probably not actually do anything that messed up with it. Um, and if they do, then we'll cross that bridge when we come to it. He took my thing.